What do witches do with their cauldrons? What are they for? Hi, I'm Sandra from mysterywitchschool.com and if you're new to the channel and you want to become a witch or a Wiccan or you want to know more about it, hit the subscribe button below so that you don't miss anything. This is a poiki actually. It's a South African poiki used for cooking and it is also a cauldron. Cauldrons have been associated with witches for a very long time and the reason being is just simply because cauldrons were used a lot, particularly back in the days before modern cookware, where you had to use them for cooking, you use them for making herbal potions and healing brews, uh, for beer, for all sorts of brewing uh, activities and of course cooking as well. So it's got a very, very strong uh, connection with that aspect of the craft. Traditionally, the cauldron should really be iron. Iron is known as the menstrual blood of the earth and it's a very strong feminine uh, symbol to the cauldron. It is about receiving and forming. So when you put, for example, if you're cooking in a cauldron, you would put food in it and you cook it up and you blend it and you do all sorts of things with it in order to give form to a culinary dish. The feminine energy is about giving form to. So that's why you'll see the feminine as being symbol, symbols as being receptive symbols like a cup uh, or the cauldron. What can you do with your cauldron apart from cook? and mixing up potions and brews. Because the cauldron is generally black, you can use it for scrying. So you might want to fill it up with water and then you can use it as a scrying bowl. And it can be a really powerful scrying bowl. You can also use it for spell work if you have a smaller cauldron. And I'll talk about the different sizes in a minute. A smaller cauldron, you can put a petition in and then bury it in the earth and for a few days and allow it to cook, so to speak, within the energy of the earth. Other things that you can do with your cauldron is if you are doing a, a sabbat, particularly if you're working with groups, you can use it to build a small fire in if you're working outdoors and it's safe to do so. You can put flowers in your cauldron. You can, sometimes with the groups that I run, uh, we might put petitions or burn petitions in the cauldron. Or if I'm using uh, stones where you're picking something out, so if you're using divination with a group, uh, you can actually use the cauldron to gather uh, things together like stones. They might have something written on them and then people take them out. You can use the cauldron for pretty much anything that you can, you can think of uh, that you may want to, to use in your, your craft. It is a very... Uh, it's very symbolic and it's very useful. Most witches use cauldrons to burn their herbs in and to burn incenses in, to burn charcoal um, with incense. You can use your cauldron to do burn petitions. You can use your cauldron to place your candles while you're wanting your candles to burn down doing candle magic because the cauldron is incredibly heat proof it's much less likely to burst into flames uh, if, the can, if, the can, if it gets too hot in the center with a candle burning down. Whereas even some ceramics can get weakened uh, by too much heat. So the cauldron comes in different sizes. And my experience with cauldrons and shopping for them has been that a lot of the witchy shops or magic shops, new age so shops that you might go into that sell cauldrons tend to sell the, the little ones. And these are really good for burning um, incense and maybe some small um, amounts of herbs in for incense. And maybe a small petition. But if you're wanting to do any magic like cooking and brewing potions and that kind of thing, you're going to need to uh, get a bigger cauldron. You can use your cauldron also for gathering moon water. So if you fill your cauldron up full of water, leave it out under the full moon, you can gather moon water that way too. And now you can use a small cauldron for that if you're only wanting a small amount of water or a larger cauldron. I found personally 
that the cost of cauldrons is phenomenally high in witchy shops. So you can get a small cauldron that's probably about this big for the same price and even more, more expensive than going to a South African shop and getting a poiki. <laughs> uh, it won't have a pentagram on it. It'll just have something really basic on it, like the, the brand of the poiki. And, you know, this one is um, a three quarter liter uh, one. But if you want a, if you want a decent sized cauldron, which is really the way to go, uh, if you are taking a call, if you're going to be doing a lot of work with your cauldron, you'll get this possibly even cheaper than a tiny little one from a witchy shop. So think about what you want. And if you want a, big, a bigger cauldron, you may have to somehow organize your own pentagram if you want to put a pentagram on it. Mine doesn't have a pentagram on it. Uh, traditional cauldrons back in the day wouldn't have had a pentagram on them either. Uh, yeah, get um, a bigger one. They are quite heavy, so um, it depends on whether you're lugging it around with you a lot or not as to how big you can go. With a poiki, you can go pretty big. You can get three litre ones, like they're huge. Uh, so that's where to go if you're wanting to get a, a cauldron that's larger than, say, this, this small size here. So I'm just going to have a look at my notes and see if there's anything I left out um, about the cauldron. Oh, yes, seasoning your cauldron. Iron needs to be seasoned, especially if you're going to be cooking with it, because you don't want it to rust. And any iron cookware needs to be seasoned, and that means oiled. So the best way to oil your cauldron is to use olive oil. You can use almond oil. You may want to mix, you could mix some other culinary oils in there with it. But if you're going to be cooking, you're probably best just to stick to a plain oil like olive oil. You can enchant the oil before you season it. And that's just basting the inside of the cauldron with the oil. So just getting a basting brush, basting the inside of the cauldron with the oil and then just heating the cauldron up a little bit so that it absorbs into the iron. And then every time you've used it, if it's to do with cooking or brewing, you want to season it again with a little bit of oil and always keeping that inside just that, 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 that bit of oil on the inside. You don't want too much, especially if you're burning stuff in it because the oil is very inflammable. Uh, but you just want it to be seasoned and that will help uh, with rust and of course with the cooking. Rust. Cauldrons being iron will get rust in them. So the way to get the rust off them is to use a scour, a scourer and you can use baking soda or you can use um, apple cider vinegar. Uh, you can use just white vinegar uh, to to clean the rust off. It can be quite simple to do that. They will rust. Uh, be careful about using anything corrosive in your cauldron. So that would mean I would avoid salt water. Uh, not a good thing with metal. So keep try and keep salt away from your cauldron. Obviously in cooking you may put salt in there and that's one of the reasons why it's important to keep your cauldron seasoned and to always be checking it for rust and scouring it uh, with the vinegar or the baking soda to keep it rust free. So that is the cauldron. That's some of the things that we use our cauldron for. Yes, we really do use cauldrons and it's not for cooking up people or frogs or anything like that. Uh, it is simply to do what people have always done with cauldron and, and which is very basic everyday stuff like cooking and brewing as well as magic. So that is the cauldron. If you want to know more about how you can become a witch, you want to know where to start, but you don't know where to start because there's just too much information out there, uh, download my free video, which is about a 20 minute video. I'm going to be redoing it soon, so it will be a longer video. That just gives you a blueprint as to where to start, how to uh, map out your learning program for yourself so that you know where to start and how to keep going learning. That's free. The details to that are below this video in the description field below. If you like the video, hit the like button, share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, comment in the comments field about your own experiences with your cauldron, what you use it for, and anything else that you may want to know. Blessed be. Mm -hmm.